Welcome to a tour video on Unity 2023. So in the last video, we started with the Unity Hub. We looked at the installation of the editor, Unity, in the version 2023.2, as well as created a new project based on the 2D core. This led us into going through the initial steps of letting Unity set everything up for us. And then I discussed a little bit how Unity works. It uses things called game objects. These are just collections of values. And they have things called components. And we saw over here within the hierarchy, when I clicked on main camera, we saw a listing of its components. And components allow us to subscribe or listen to systems. There are lots of systems and potentially many, many more game objects. So instead of creating more complexity for people and potentially lots of work for the game engine, the thing that drives the game, it allows us to create objects that then listen for, subscribe to certain systems so that those objects have exactly what they need when they need it and Unity can run as fast as possible. So let's spend some time in this video creating a new game object, looking at its components and getting used to the idea of moving between the hierarchy and the inspector views within Unity because we often select game objects and then look at their components to change some value. So let's start over here in the hierarchy view. So in Unity, there are often multiple ways to do things. And you will sometimes find one is slightly more comfortable than the other, or you might get used to doing something based on videos or contents or tutorials you've seen. So when it comes to creating new game objects, there are multiple ways to do this. So I'm gonna start by pointing out something up here in the menu. We have file, edit, assets, and game object. And notice I have a list of potential game objects, 2D objects, 3D objects, etc. I can also, within the hierarchy view, click the, on the little plus, and I have the exact same menu options. I can also alternatively right click, and come down and have the exact same options. So all three different approaches are all completely valid. It's whatever you get used to doing. But what we wanna do is we wanna create something that is a 2D object. So I'm gonna this time return back to the beginning. And again, there are multiple ways to do this, all perfectly valid. Game object, 2D object, sprites, and then I'm gonna come over here to square and click this. So we've now added something called a sprite to this project. A sprite is a description that has a longer history than Unity, and it's generally a description of something drawn to the screen. We can think of sprites potentially as characters, although that's not quite true, but they can be useful to put a bunch of things together, the thing we're drawing. A sprite within Unity right here comes with the default name of square when I chose the square. And notice we have something different now in the middle. We have this little white square. Now, as we previously saw with camera, when I selected it from the hierarchy, moved over to inspector, I have a listing of its components. This is also true of the new sprite called square. I click on this, I have a listing of its components. And notice these are different from camera. Again, there are different systems and potentially lots of different game objects. And to speed things up, game objects can tell Unity certain systems they're interested in. So as it comes to a sprite, it has a transform component, something we also saw the camera had. It has a sprite renderer. And anytime we see the word render or renderer, it just means drawing or drawing to the screen. So here's the thing that draws the sprite. And over here, camera, transform, and it has a camera system. So the camera game object, main camera over here, has a camera component that talks to the camera system. And over here, our sprite called, sprite called square has a sprite renderer that talks to the drawing system. So as I mentioned, we're gonna have lots of different objects as this series go forward, some of which might have similar components and many of which won't. They'll have very particular components to allow them to talk to particular systems. Again, wanting to speed things up. We don't give all objects all information. We just give the objects the information they ask for exactly when they need it. And this makes things run a lot faster. So when we were over here with main camera, we couldn't quite see what we were doing, although we can very faintly see perhaps some small squares to move things around. But if we click on square, that's a sprite, it's much easier. In fact, if I move my cursor right here, I can click and drag this around right here. So now that we've done that, it's time to talk a little bit about what this middle space is. So we're over here, a hierarchy that is a listing of game objects. 
on the left, on the far right is the inspector with their components. In the middle is something we call the scene view. So as we're creating things within Unity, we can divide up a larger project into sections. Each of those sections can have their own game objects. And the work for these sections that Unity use is called a scene. In fact, if we think of things like a play or a musical, they're often divided up into different scenes. And within those scenes might be different actions or different people talking or different interactions. So in the same way, we can think of a game composed of a bunch of different scenes. Each scene has its own game object. In fact, we may have noticed up here it says sample scene at the very top of the hierarchy right here. And it's telling us that we're currently looking at a scene called sample scene in which it contains two game objects, main camera with its component and square with its components. So whenever we're working with, within Unity, we are always working within a scene. There will always be at least one scene open. And some advanced projects, we can in fact have multiple scenes open, but we always will have at least one. So we have a single scene open, a collection of game objects. We have two game objects, main camera and square, each of which have their own components, and those talk to different systems. Now, within the scene view shows us the current scene we have. So sample scene, the name of the scene, is a current scene we're looking at. And so whatever we're using as a camera to look into the scene, look into the game, shows us what we're currently looking at. It also allows us to move things around. So I have right here square, which is a sprite selected within the hierarchy. And within the scene, notice it has these little marks around it, these little blue dots. And I can click and drag it. As I drag it, pay attention in the upper right hand corner in the inspector view. In the inspector view, something is changing as I move it. These numbers right here, it's position, it's transform, one of its components has a position where it is in the world. As I move this, I can change its position, X, Y, right here. Now notice Z doesn't change. This is because we're doing 2D, two dimensions, X and Y. If we were doing 3D, we would have X, Y, and Z or Z. So if we have X and Y, just two dimensions, a 2D project. So we won't be paying attention to Z. So notice it moves around in X and Y. So two different game objects, each of their own components, which talk to different systems. So over here as a sprite, notice I can move this around. Now, what if I want to see what the player would see? So over here in scene view, right one tab over is game. And I click on game, shows us what it looks like from the player's point of view. The player's point of view, there is a single sprite right here, roughly this part right here with the corresponding position, negative 1.9 and 1.22 for X and Y. Notice our scene view and our game view are not the same thing. They're often very close. This is very close right here, but this is slightly different. Now, the reason why they're different is because the camera, if I select that, shows this space right here. This kind of white rectangle on the, on the darker grid is what the camera is looking at. So we can see this gets a little bigger because that's what the camera is looking at. So if we click this, and I drag this sprite outside of this area and go to game view, I've moved it outside of the camera. So something we have to think about is potentially where things are in respect to the camera. Now, this is important because as I've discussed, each game object has components. One of the components we will see across many different game objects is called the transform component. That is, game objects can potentially have a space in the scene. So the main camera has a space. It is set at negative 10 Z. And I said we wouldn't be doing Z too much and we're not, but it's set back just enough that it's showing us what's inside here or not. Potentially then we can move the camera. And in fact, in future videos, we will move the camera quite a bit to show other parts that we may want to see within the same scene. So, Going back to the metaphor I said earlier about musicals and plays and those being divided into scenes, think about what you're currently seeing on the stage as the camera. So potentially other things might be going on off stage behind the scenes, but unless the camera's looking at them, that is, unless it's on the stage in front of us, we can't see it. 
So if something moves outside of the camera range, if I click on this sprite and drag it off, it's not within the camera and we can't see it. So we need to know where things are, which is why the main camera has a transform and the square sprite has a transform. So let me review what I've talked about in this video. So I began by reviewing the previous video. We created a project, a 2D core. We're now working within Unity 2023.2. As we work within Unity, we deal with game objects. And we now know game objects are within scenes and there will always be at least one scene open. So for us, sample scene is what we start with. That's the default given to us when we open Unity. We also know that we can add new game objects. So we can use game object menu from up here. Also within hierarchy, we can click the plus or as well, we can right click and select those as well. And there's lots of different game objects, many of which we'll come to know in future videos. So we have game objects. As we add game objects to a scene, we can select them from the hierarchy view, move over the inspector view and look at their corresponding components and potentially change their values. And we'll do this a lot more in future videos. We've also now finally talked about this big old middle space as the scene view, showing us that what is within the current scene. So we needed to understand what a scene was before I could talk about the scene view. As well as right next to that, we have the game view showing what a player would see. So what a player sees and what we see as developers or designers is always slightly different. So we have a view into the current scene, everything that's available within that scene. And we can also go and look at what the player might see. And of course, we now understand that what the player sees is within the camera, which means we move it off the camera or in the metaphor of moving things off the stage, the player may not see it. So we now understand that game objects have a transform component or put another way, they have a position within the world. And this also includes the camera. So we've now starting to put the ideas of game objects and components and different systems into play as we start to build on all of these concepts within Unity 2023. As we start to add more game objects in future videos, we will keep returning to these exact same ideas. Moving over here from the hierarchy view, selecting different game objects, moving over to inspector view, changing their values for their corresponding components, which of course are subscribed or talk to other systems. And now of course, using the scene view, this big old space in the middle to now look at what it looks like within the scene and potentially what it looks like as the game view for players. And we'll finally add in a couple of future videos, what's going down here at the bottom, but we're slowly adding more parts of the user interface as we build in complexity with the concepts that we understand within Unity 2023. Thanks for watching.